call. So I'm Morgan McSweeney. I work in our athletic department at San Diego State with our fundraising development office and the Aztec Club. And, um, you know, every year we're grateful for San Diego Kiwanis support and what you guys do for our student athletes. I know we've got some um, stellar regular students here as well. And so we're uh, appreciative and grateful for Kiwanis' continued support that you guys show us every year. Um, things are heavy in action right now for us with 18 of our 19 sports going on in the spring and 400 of our 500 plus student athletes in action and competition right now. So um, I'll let John Silver turn, talk a lot women's hoops a little bit, but um, we're excited for being here and thanks for the opportunity. Thanks Morgan and thanks everyone for having, having us today. My name is John Silver. I'm the assistant athletic director over at San Diego State for the women's basketball team. I'm the understudy today for our student athletes, uh, a lot of whom are in the training room preparing already for the Mountain West tournament uh, and we leave Saturday for that. But I just wanted to come on briefly and, and thank you all for your support of, of what our student athletes are doing here. It's obviously been a challenging season, uh, but it's been a, we, we've practiced our perseverance and resilience and relied on each other and community members. And it's nice to know that while normally we have all of your support in Viejas or in the community that, that uh, we're able to provide some entertainment and some sports and some relief from, from normality uh, here and there. It's nice to see some familiar names and faces too on the call today. Uh, and just thank you for your continued support of our program and our university. Thanks Coach Silver. And, and I love your background. I mean, it's not virtual, right? That's a real coach's office. We got some pick plays. We got some out of bounds plays. You know, we'll make sure nobody from another university is stealing any of your plays right now as well. Just to no, get that, that, these are all decoys. <laughs> real playbook is on the other board. But really it's, uh, you know, I got some sideline out of bounds, got the bracket up, which we're updating every day. And uh, it's such a unique season with games being canceled and postponed. And, you know, our athletic department has done a great job of being adaptable. And so has our coaching staff and, and our student athletes as well. Uh, I've been very resilient uh, and done well in the classroom too during all of this, all of this uh, uniqueness. So thank you for, for, again, everything you do to support our athletes and their scholarships. Awesome. <laughs> We could probably do a call just with you and Morgan with how many Aztec athletic boosters we have in the club. So we might have to reschedule you guys for another call so we could get to the students. But thank you for being here and representing uh, SDSU Athletics. Let's let's send it over to Anna Marshall, who's in the financial aid office at SDSU. Anna, you want to say hello? Hi, Steve. Thank you, everybody, for uh, inviting us and your support through the years. I help administer the uh, general Kiwanis scholarship uh, that we give out to the various students in the university. So I believe we do have one student um, on today and that would be Melissa Sanchez. So if Melissa, if you'd like to say hi, that'd be great. Hi, I'm Melissa Sanchez. Um, I'm a fourth year. I'm a social work major and I'm about to graduate. Um, I also have two minors, one in social change and counseling and another one in cultural proficiency. And I'm hoping to be a double Aztec and I'm a, currently waiting for an MSW application um, response. So fingers crossed. Awesome, thank you, Melissa. We also have two uh, SDSU students from the School of Music. And I know one of them actually has to step off the call fairly quickly um, for another a course or something like that. So let me see, is Aaron or Shannon on the call from the School of Music? Yeah, I think we're both here actually. Um... But yeah, I'll jump in and introduce myself. Uh, I finished my undergraduate degree at Point Loma Nazarene University, but now I'm at SDSU uh, doing my graduate degree uh, to get a master's in choral conducting. Uh, so I direct choirs there. Um, I think that was everything you asked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's a great start, Aaron. Thank you for being here. And then Shannon, I think has to jump off the call. So Shannon, are you here? Hey, I'm here. Good afternoon, I'm Shannon. Um, I'm a third year junior, um, actually a second year, but a junior uh, music education major at um, San Diego State in the School of Music and Dance. And um, with the ultimate uh, goal to uh, become a music educator, hopefully here in San Diego. Awesome. Now, Shannon, you, you've got to go in a couple minutes, correct? I do. I have a class, yeah. <laughs> but I'm so grateful to um, be, have the opportunity to be here for just a moment and um, to see some familiar faces as well.
do, do you want to share before you go maybe a memory from your college experience so far or um, something that you've taken out of this challenging, you know, last year with the pandemic or any experience that you think our club might enjoy hearing about? Sorry to put you on the spot, but I know you got to go. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. Um, yes, absolutely. You know, one thing, and it's kind of not limited to my experience at the university, but um, just enjoying every day, really appreciating now, um, living in the present moment has never resonated so much with me as it has in this last year. Um, just not taking for granted um, being able to meet, um, in my case, uh, to be able to make music with other people um, without any pressure or <laughs> constraints. Um, so just, it's definitely um, been a, just a, a grounding experience for me, humbling. Um, and also because so many people have, um, have passed on during this time, um, it just really, it's a motivator to live every day to the fullest. Awesome. Well, thank you, Shannon. Good luck with your, the rest of your year and, uh, your course that starts in a couple minutes. We'll let you go, but thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you. Bye everyone. So, so let me put it back to the group. Um, and, and actually, let me ask any, any other students or representatives from universities that I missed that didn't yet say hello? I think we covered. Mr. Morris. Yes, uh, go ahead. Oh, hey, yes, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph Shanks, and I'm a graduate student at, S at SCSU studying viola performance. This is my final semester. I'm glad to be close to being done. So thank you so much for allowing us to join your luncheon today. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. And, and most of uh, our club members know we have a special relationship with um, not only SDSU Athletics, but the SDSU School of Music. Um, and we, they've had some transition in their leadership. So we had to scramble to get a couple of their students to attend. So thank you for being here uh, at such short notice. Uh, so let me, let me put it back to the, the group. Uh, I think we have six students on the call now. Um, I, I sent them ahead of time just a couple of questions I thought I might ask, and then we'll open it up to the club to ask some questions. But I think the first question on everybody's mind is, you know, we've, we've had this pandemic going for, for a year now, and we know it's affecting education and how that's delivered. And so we're really curious what the college experience has been like uh, for the last year. And I think I'll start with Bella, because I think I, I said I'd circle back uh, knowing that she looked like she was in a dorm, so curious about campus life, uh, as well as the educational experience. Not everybody has to answer, but if you want to follow um, up Bella, you can. But Bella, if that's okay, we'll start with you. Just let us know how it's been this last year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this last year has been very just unpredictable. So it's kind of like just taking each day at a time, like what is going to happen next week, what's going to happen the next week. Um, with my campus in particular, since we are a private school, we do have more flexibility in what we're able to do. So um, my school was fully online for a mini term for January and February, where we were able to take a few courses for free, but fully online. Um, but I had the privilege of being able to live on campus by the beautiful ocean in an ocean view dorm, um, a room all to myself um, with about 200 other students taking courses, like one course online on the mini term. So actually that was a very, I mean, that's an experience that I never would have gotten without the pandemic is being able to live on Point Loma Nazarene campus pretty much all to myself but um the experience altogether one word I would give it is quiet it's been extremely quiet which has been very peaceful for me personally I've had a lot of solitude here but also it it kind of made me forget what college really is like um but just this past weekend 80% of our student body just moved back on campus. So everything's buzzing right now. People are, some of our classes are in person right now. So it's definitely made me just so excited remembering what it's like to actually be in college. Like I forgot what it's like to be in college. Um, yeah, but 
the whole past year has just been so unpredictable. Um, teachers have definitely been so, so gracious um, with me and with other students and just being able to, yeah, accommodate like all the, all the needs and all the, the hard things that people are going through. So I found it to just be very humbling and I've experienced a lot of grace. And so I just have a lot of gratitude really um, out of this last year. And I'm optimistic and really excited to see that we're starting to get back to normalcy now. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Great response. I can tell you've been on a few Zoom calls before. You know what you're doing. You know how to... <laughs> <laughs> a few. Yeah. Um, and sorry, Suzette, for not giving you a space to introduce yourself um, from School of Music as well, correct? Do you want to say hello? Hi. Um, my name is Suzette. Um, I'm a music education major, and I'm also minoring in social work and child and family development. Um, I am a fourth year student at SDSU. Awesome, thank you. Sorry, I missed you there. Anybody else I missed? Anybody else at all? Okay, so back to the question. Thanks, Bella, for kicking us off. Anybody else want to share, you know, maybe what this uh, college experience has been, maybe the educational side, maybe the social side, um, dealing with the pandemic, virtual learning, those kind of things. Anybody else want to share on that one? Don't be shy. I can share. Um, yeah, so it's, I think it's been especially interesting. I mean, maybe this is just because it's the world that I'm in, but I think it's been especially interesting uh, trying to make uh, ensemble music <laughs> during the pandemic. Um, because when you've got like virtual choir programs going on, um, of course there's value in that but it's, it's nowhere near the same experience as actually being together and singing or playing, playing music in the same room. Um, so luckily at SDSU, uh, we've been approved to, to, to do, at least the choirs have been approved to do parking structure rehearsals where uh, we all meet in this parking structure and we get temperature checked at entry. We have masks on the whole time. We're 15 feet apart when we're singing, all those precautions. Um, but we're luckily through that, we're able to make music in the same space, which I think is uh, pretty hard to come by anywhere in the world these days. Uh, so I've been really thankful that SDS SDSU has been able to, to make that work. And of course, even with doing that, there's still adjustments that, that need to be made to, to sing in that environment. Um, but somehow we're making it happen. And I guess <laughs> you get what you can take at this point in time. Yeah, that's incredible. I'd love to pull my car in and park in there and listen to the rehearsals. That would be, that would be incredible. Uh, anyone else want to share? Uh, pandemic, here we are a year later, how it's going, how you're doing. Okay, I'll start calling on people when we get to the next question then, that's okay. Steve, I'll, I'll just dive in for a moment if, if yeah, I may. Ahead. Aaron, we, uh, when we practice in the arena, we usually exit the arena to do a, a really wonderful soundtrack. So uh, I just wanna thank you and your group for, for the music that you're making. We hear you and it's amazing and it's a great way to end the day. That's awesome. Okay, so the next question I had sent out um, is about your future plans, right? Some of you are, are in your second, third year, a couple of you are towards the end. And, and Stephanie, if you don't mind, I'll, I'd like to start with you because you're so close to the end. And I think you had shared a little bit about what your plans were last year, but do you want to share with us maybe what, what you're thinking now that you're a few months for, or gosh, weeks almost from graduation? Yeah. Um, so last year I did an internship at uh, for Amazon Web Services as a sourcing recruiter. So just like looking for people for technical positions like software engineering. And uh, I really liked it. So I'll be moving to Seattle in June, the beginning of June. So after I graduate, like two weeks later, I'll be moving. And it's just a little bit interesting because I was supposed to do the internship in Seattle but COVID happened, so I did it online. So I'll be moving there without visiting the area um, or getting to know the area well beforehand. 
and uh, yeah, it, it'll just be a unique experience. Yeah, bring a raincoat. I can give you that advice. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about that. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, it's not as much sunshine as San Diego, but you know, if you're indoors mm -hmm. as an accounting, you know, as a as a indoor person, you're not going to worry about that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and Melissa, you're getting close to the end. You said you were trying to get in to to a, was it a master's program? Do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I'm hoping to get into the uh, SDSU social work master's program to uh, first I I'm Title IV E. Um, since I haven't heard back yet, I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I have to either. Um, what I'm going to do after. So it's kind of up in the air since I haven't gotten my acceptance, but I'm hoping to keep um, hopefully as well. Cool. Thanks. Sarah, we, you were breaking up just a little bit, but I think we got the gist of, of what you're saying. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Anybody else want to share uh, plans after college? If you're getting close to the end or if you're in the middle, maybe you have some plans for the summer internships, things like that. Anyone else? Okay. Let's move on then. Um, anybody want to share about, you know, going through college, you need some support from friends and family, but it's always good when you have a mentor or a role model. Maybe it's a professor, maybe it's someone you connected with uh, in an internship, but does anyone want to share uh, a mentor or somebody they've, they've really ha had help supporting them to get them to this point with all the challenges we've been facing? I'm sure our school of music folks, you'd all say your your instructors and and uh, faculty. Do you want to any of you, Joseph or uh, Aaron, want to take that one? Sure, I can speak on that a little bit. So yeah, like you mentioned, as music students, we have our private instructor, and they obviously are a part of our lives a lot and help us guide through the our personal growth on the instrument or voice, uh, depending on what you are. So I shout out to Professor Merrill, my viola teacher, who has really helped me continue to grow on my, in my abilities with the viola, even during COVID. Uh, for me, it actually has been better because the virtual lessons, you can record them with Zoom and so you can go back and check, like, did he say that? Oh, you did say that. Okay, that's how you do that. So there has been some benefits in that way to the Zoom lessons. I look forward to having in-person lessons someday but uh, so Professor Merrill and then Professor Gertis, the orchestra conductor at San Diego State is very good about helping students. And um, I'm looking forward, we actually get to start going back to rehearsals today in person in the parking garage. So looking forward to seeing him and working with him for my last couple of months here. Awesome. Suzette, Aaron, anyone else wanna, wanna share? I can share. Um, so I also, like mentioned before, I also work very close with um, my vocal lesson. I'm a voice major. Um, her name is Katie Polit, Polit. And um, she's just very amazing, which I was very sad because she came halfway through um, my four years. So I didn't get her for the first time until last year. I was only able to work with her for three semesters. But during those three semesters, I really did notice how my voice improved. And not only that, I had someone that I could go to ask any questions. She recommended <laughs> some scholarships as well. And she was just very amazing throughout um, these two years that I was able to have her. And I still talk to her now. So it's just very nice to have someone that is going to support you throughout um, those years, especially in music. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Suzette. And I, and I should have mentioned, um, if anybody in the group, uh, the club, wants to ask a question to our students, go ahead and type it in the chat, and I can kind of facilitate those as we get towards the end of our time. Um, anybody else want to share, before I have one more question for the group, anybody else want to share about a mentor uh, or somebody who's been inspirational to your 
educational journey so far? Okay. Well, the last question that, oh, go ahead, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to talk about, about like some mentors and like a lot of people that helped me throughout my career in college. So um, a little bit of my background, so I'm like the first in my family to attend college in, or, or just school in general in the United States. So I only have my mom and dad here in the uh, States. And so I've reached out to a lot of people for help and then a lot of people have been really helpful. And I know last year I talked to Gary, I think I saw him here. And then he helped me by um, giving me a contact he had in HR when I was interested in learning more about HR and just a lot of people that like help within the community have been really helpful like Kiwanis and I it just surprised me how much help there is out there and then people who are willing to give their time to help others so I think that's been really inspirational for me and uh, like I really want to give back when I graduate so I'm really grateful for that. Awesome. And yeah, Gary Knight is on the is on the call. Hey, Gary, thanks for that. That's great. Um, you know, and, and I, I, I'm remiss before we kind of start taking questions from the group. We if you're a student and you're on the call today because we can't feed you in person like we normally would at a luncheon, we're going to send you all a twenty dollar gift card to some kind of mobile delivery food app. We haven't decided which one yet. So it could be Grubhub or DoorDash, uh, but we're gonna send that to you. And Joseph, I don't think I have your email yet. So make sure you connect with me uh, at the end, but I have everybody else's, I believe. Uh, and that's because members of our club decided to extra put a little extra money in the hopper and, and we could send that gift card to you because we wanted to be able to feed you even though you couldn't be in here in person. So uh, thanks to all the club members who donated to that effort. A lot of you are on the call today to make that happen. So that's awesome. Uh, we're gonna send those to you after the luncheon today. So you can you can feast on a whatever you want this week <laughs> in memory of the luncheon that you attended. So as we get down towards the end, uh, I'll start scanning the chat for questions. Um, but I guess the last question I'll put to the group of students uh, from my end is, you know, what's been one of the most exciting things or, or the best things or, you know, one of your most cherished memories so far in your college experience? Maybe it's a class you took, relationship you built uh, before pandemic. Maybe it was a trip you took <laughs> with some friends. Um, so, I mean, these are always kind of inspirational. So if anybody wants to share kind of the most exciting, yeah, go ahead, Joseph, we'll let you kick it off and then we'll pass it on to anyone else. Sure. So probably one of the best memories I have, this was in my undergrad at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, was the opportunity to take a orchestra performance tour to Central Europe. So got to go to Budapest, Prague, Vienna, uh, perform in a couple churches there and then a concert hall, Dvorak Hall. And that was just an amazing experience to see where the music I study came from and the birthplace and the place where these great composers lived and composed and worked. So that was probably one of the highlights of my college career. Awesome, who's next? I could go next. Yeah, so go one of my highlights would be basically getting involved on campus and like getting the job that I got. So I'm a mentor at Commuter Life in SDSU. So that has been re really rewarding being able to help other first gen students you know go through college and also i just had a really rough high school experience especially being first gen and like coming to sdsu i was able to find my voice and find who i was and i didn't think i would ever do that like i didn't think college would actually make me grow like i don't know i just heard so many things about college making you grow but i didn't believe believe in it because it sounded kind of like I don't know like kind of I would say kind of corny but then I kind of went through it and then I met so many great people I helped so many great people and it's been such a rewarding experience to be able to give back to also a program that also gave back to like gave support to me on my first year so I'm a commuter student 
and I had a commuter mentor and now I'm the mentor helping other commuter um, students. So it's pretty great to be able to just give back to the SDSU community and finally know who I am after so many years of searching. That's awesome. Thank you, Melissa. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. That's fantastic. Anyone else? Um, I can share one. So um, at Point Loma, we are very, a lot of the students are very um, community service focused. We love to just serve, whether it's through ministry, um, yeah, Christian ministry or, or not, like just, you know, um, any kind of outreach, there's just a lot of opportunities for that here. But what we found in the business school is that there were a lot of clubs uh, for like marketing and finance and things like that, but there were no clubs for just leadership and business leaders who want to serve. So um, a professor here, Randy Wainick, he um, actually um, was looking for students who wanted to found a, a club that was specifically targeted toward um, student leaders on campus who want to serve. And so um, me, along with um, a few other students in the business school, actually got together and founded a club called the Point Loma Management and Leadership Club. Um, and yeah, we're the we're the founding members and we're the we're the board basically of the club. And this is our second year, technically our second year operating, but COVID kind of knocked us out of, uh, you know, our true being able to have club meetings and, and operate but um we did have the opportunity a few months ago to actually um provide food for 800 families in city heights um in one morning it was really incredible um yeah through the rock church we were able to partner with them so um that was just an incredible experience it just showed really like it if this is like the very beginnings of our club i'm just so excited of like to see what else we're going to do and how the club's going to grow. And I just can't wait to see the, like the legacy this is going to leave. So that has been one of the most cherished, um, yeah, opportunities and, and memories I've been able to have. Wow. That's awesome. I think our club as a service club, we aspire to, to be a part of those kind of activities, like you mentioned. And, you know, as you uh, graduate college, don't forget to look up a Kiwanis club near wherever you land. Cause, uh, <laughs> You know, we, we love to be a part of big service projects like that and community involvement. And th that's amazing. So kudos to you and your, your team for forming that club. And I hope it has amazing success. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay, we got it like a minute or two left. Anybody else want to share kind of some parting, parting thoughts, uh, best experience in school highlights? Maybe we can take one or two more. I'd be happy to share. Go ahead, Aaron. So um i think that my highlight in a way it's a moment but it's also kind of the culmination of an entire semester uh so my first semester at uh, sdsu was actually the only one in this two-year program that has been uh, fully in person because in the spring is when the pandemic hit um and so at the end of the fall semester uh both of us grad students in the program got an opportunity to conduct a couple of pieces with the choirs during uh, their final concert. And so that moment was was really, really special. But I think the, the main reason it was so special was all the work that we'd done throughout the semester with the students and just seeing those people that we had worked on meticulously throughout the semester and uh, grown really close to relationally throughout that time, um, just kind of on the same team and being in the moment together. Uh, so that was really special for me. And uh, I'll always be very thankful for all of the students and, and people that I've met at SDSU. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, with that, I think we're, I think we're right up on time. We got a couple of um, club uh, things to do at the very end of the meeting. So students, you're welcome to stay on. Um, we've got a few minutes left, but we're going to email you a little certificate that says thanks for being here and then also that gift card. If you want to reply to my email here, I'll put it in the chat. If, I think I have most of your emails now. Um, but if you have a vote on whether, whether we should send you uh, Grubhub or DoorDash or something, go ahead and send me your preference and then we can see who the winning vote is so we can decide on what kind of card to send you all. Here's my email. It is in the chat right now. Oh, already a vote from Bella on DoorDash. Okay. 
Thank you for that. So uh, club members, let's give it up for these students for being here. Thanks everyone. Time out of your day. We're so glad you're here, even though we're virtual. Thank you guys so much for having us. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Outstanding job, Steve and uh, college scholars. Thank you so much. Best endeavors in, in your futures. All bright. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Steve, to your committee as well for putting together a great program and to the San Diego Kiwanis Club Foundation for making all of these um, scholarships possible. Who ate the dog mouth? Who? Whose dog is this? Who's Kiwanis Paw Rent? Any guesses out there? Karina, any clues you wanna you wanna um, convey? Well, if I give away one of the dogs' names, it might be really easy. The older oh. dog named Lambo. Okay, that Floros. definitely narrows it down. I would There's say Floros, Floros. Yeah. Yeah. Baby Gaga's dog. That's wonderful, Jim. Anything to share? Um, you know, are your your pants dry there? Because that that looks like an awful young dog. There is it yes, body trained. Have have body trained? Yet, so I, he hasn't pooped in my bed yet, so I consider it a, a positive day. That's a big win. That's a big, big win. Lots of, uh, uh, lots of kudos to you. Be Mia's beautiful. Oh, I love that intro music. It was always magic having Bill Gibbs around. Dear old Bill Gibbs was a longtime Kiwanian and he always uh, was thankful for every day that he was around and for every club meeting, he always gave a buck uh, for things that he was uh, thankful for. And uh, now is our opportunity as a Kiwanis Club to uh, convey what you're thankful for this week in uh, conveying a happy bill buck. Any happy bill bucks out there? I'll start us off. Okay, go for it, Karina. So after a year of me trying to start a candle business, I am excited to report that I actually got it together, uh, did it the right way where I'm insured and have an LLC and the uh, website is exclusively online right now with a secret password. So if you are interested in buying one of my creations, I put the website with the password in the chat. Um, but I wanted to thank everyone for their support of all of this. It's great to see a COVID creation um, come to fruition. Um, so just pray though that none of my candles burn anybody's place down. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that it's finally happening and uh, thank you. And you will all be getting candles for your birthdays and holidays for the next 20 years. So hope you like That's it. That's tremendous. That's <laughs> tremendous. I take it you've also invested in some technology to make these candles or are you still all handmade with these? All handmade, all organic. Incredible. So it's the best candle you can possibly buy right now. Love it. Congratulations, Karina. Uh, I too have a Bill Bucks to share. A ha happy dollars. My son, Jackson, uh, who you all know attends Francis Parker School, and uh, we're just thankful that he's doing well and starting football next week. Uh, he's getting an A in physics. So, I mean, I never was able to do that. And uh, so I'm very happy for my boy uh, today. So $5 for Jackson in his uh, physics endeavors. All right, I'm ready to uh, throw $64 of Bill Bucks into the world for us, making it through our 64th anniversary of Laurels for Leaders. Plus, somebody would find out that I did this at the Scripps Ranch Club already and kick me if I didn't do it down here as well. So uh, throw 64 happy bucks in for that. Oh, you're awesome. Yeah, Gordon, tremendous job with Laurels for Leaders, and thank you for your, your leadership during this uh, very uh, trying year and the online event was fantastic and $64 is way too generous, but thank you. Hey, President Mike. Yes, sir, Chuck it's Day. Chuck Day and he's been a poor attendee. So I'm gonna pony up some bucks here. I'm gonna throw a hundred bucks into the, into the pot here because I've been such a lousy attendee, but I also need to congratulate Gordon uh, on his success and all the team, Karina and Emily for a great job on Laurels. I've been getting the surveys back and I can tell you, you know, we, we had the right speaker in the right place in the right time and in the right way. And uh, I just want to congratulate uh, 
uh, everybody and the board of the Laurels. And thank again to Qantas Club Foundation for the incredible support. So I'm going to be uh, ponying up a bit here. And uh, oh, thank you, Chuck, and thank you for your support of Laurels. I thought the uh, this the pivot to the the Laurel Society was genius. It's <laughs> that was great. And uh, yeah, uh, great job there. And looking forward to reading the surveys. And well, you know what? I'm so inspired by Chuck. I'm pivoting up my 64 to 100 bucks. <laughs> Awesome. Lauren, awesome. take it back. Add that extra 36 bucks. Hmm. And the Scripps Ranch Club will be happy too, Gary, because now I'll go back and double for them and give them the extra. <laughs> but Chuck, you're helping multiple Kiwanis clubs here now with your inspiration. That's great. Oh, yes, J Jay Jeffco. Yeah, just uh, uh, a, a poignant uh, memorial. Uh, Sunday was the fourth anniversary of our loss of Kendra. That even though she was a Rotarian, we forgave her for that as president of the Rancho Bernardo Sunrise Club. But um, my son and daughter and I had a two hour call with my daughter in San Antonio just to commemorate and, and tell old Kendra's story. So that's a, a, a poignant buck, a hundred bucks, but also on a personal level and all we people that are slightly over 39 talk about is that not only did I have vaccine shot one and vaccine shot two and had no side effects is that then last week at the 10 day mark, I got a um, COVID test and, and uh, one of the, again, one of the few times that uh, negative is positive. Incredible. <laughs> Great news all the way around. And thank you for sharing regarding Kendra. That, that is a milestone. And thank you for the hundred dollars to the club. I, I want to, have, I have a happy buck. I want to really compliment Steve on today's event. It was wonderful. On Gordon, on Laurels for Leaders, it was wonderful. So I'm donating 80 in that, and I'm adding 20 more for my student, which I thought I registered last week for, and I'm now making sure that uh, Lauren adds it to the list. So a total of 100 as well, um, but 20 escrowed for the student lunch today. And uh, so Karina, I want my gold star. <laughs> Give her a gold star. Thank you so much, Judy. My Unending support of the club, involved in so many committees and wow, what a contribution. Thank you so much. Mike, this is Sally. Sally, go for I'll it. Give, I'll give 50 bucks. Um, I'm out here in Palm Desert and there's a tiny little club um, in Palm Springs. They have eight members. And I'm going to try to get them to do um, a, an inner club on next the next meeting. Um, but they're just, they're so sweet. They're so nice. And they're so excited about the things they do in the community. And um, subject to your approval, um, uh, David Martinez is the president out here. And he's going to try to figure out if I can be a dual membership to this club and to his club. And um, I just want to help inspire them to show them what you know, big foundations do and big clubs can do. And, but they're so nice. They're so sweet. I love it. So <laughs> celebrating 50 to you and I'm going to give them 50. So I'm kind of split between you guys. I love it. Bring the palms to San Diego for a day and we'll definitely give well, them we'll, a yeah, We will, they're palm, palm Springs, Coachella Valley, Palm, it's a big long name, but it's, they're just yeah. sweet, sweet people. And it's kind of cool. That's great. And great to see your face on the Zoom, Sally. Glad you're doing well. Vic, Vic Bianchini, please speak up, good sir. Congratulations on the Scholars Luncheon. Went fantastic. Uh, are you out there? Yeah, yeah, I'm out here. And and uh, I think this $100 is contagious because now I have this compulsion to give $100 to make up for my leadership deficiencies on the foundation. <laughs> Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. No, not no deficiencies. I feel bad. Please, no one tell Jackson that I only went for five bucks for the physics deal. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This is being recorded, Mike, so it's going to be on the internet. He's going to find out. So. Oh darn. <laughs> I know he does look me up periodically. I made this dumb little video uh, for Rico. It has something like 24,000 views on YouTube. He says I'm like trending on YouTube. 23,999 so are him. <laughs> I know. He loves <laughs> Maybe not after I only gave him five bucks. But. 
All right, thank you. That was a rousing round of Bills Bucks. Thank you all so much. I love our members. What a great day. Thank you again, Steve. Um, anything else to close us out there, Karina? Just make sure you join next Thursday. David J, who is a previous Jeopardy participant, has registered. So I'm going to try and rev up the content. Dog Frost, if you can be there, I'd love to have a battle of the past Jeopardy participants. So well, let's see if we can have a duel down of David versus Doug next Thursday. Um, and I'm thinking since we have a fifth Tuesday and since a lot of our members are vaccinated, maybe we'll take our uh, last week of the month and go to Kaiserhof. So I'll see what day works best for Sean and we'll send it out and maybe we can all see each other in person. I know I miss seeing you all. Uh, and so we'll try and make that happen. Um, we have talked about just continuing doing the Zooms um, for a while because uh, Admiral Baker isn't open to the public yet. Um, mm -hmm. So just so everyone knows with that, we do have a lot of really good programs coming up for the next couple months. So um, that's all I have to report. Great. So Doug, Thank Doug you and so Dave, much. that'd be the clash of the titans, right? Oh, Indeed. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the recap uh, and all you do, Karina, for putting these Zooms together. And uh, for any of the scholars that are still with us on the Zoom, we want to uh, wish you a good day and uh, good luck in all of your endeavors. And uh, with that, I'll bring the meeting to a close. We got to uh, get the big bell back. I know, I know. But, but thank you again, Judy. I love my bell. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Oh, are we, uh, Karina, are we staying on for our, our, our next little bit? Okay. Anyone who wants to, to, to stay on board for awards um, and other matters? Just, just uh, tell me the routine. To... Uh, Lauren or, or Karina, do you send me a, a, a way that I can uh, send my $100 in? Yeah, Vic, I will um, bill you now and you'll get it just like you do when you register okay. uh, and you can right. pay it online. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. bye -bye. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs>